All right, today we're going to be going over the role of the IGL or in-game leader in Respawn in competitive Call of Duty. You know, you hear the term IGL or in-game leader all the time in other esports, you know, being that one final player that makes that decision on whatever strat that they're going to do in that specific situation. Uh, so let's talk about how it's being used in Respawn at the pro level. All right, so I brought out the drawing board just in case I want to talk about any specific situations, uh, but I really just want to basically more discuss uh, what the role is and how it, there's some misconceptions about the role nowadays uh, at the pro level. In search, obviously, there are a lot of times where there is that IGL who's calling the strats at the beginning of the round um, or maybe even mid round. But most of the time, every round is going to start with a call on what they want to do. And that is made by the one IGL or anyone that might see a specific play working in that situation and acting off of it. So to go on to respawn, you know, there are a lot of times where one person might be directing or helping out a team in terms of communication, but I wouldn't really consider them the quote unquote IGL. So uh, an IGL in terms of respawn, let's say we're trying to break P3 here and we're holding off scrap time. Let's say we're breaking through diner side. So let's say we have one guy here, one guy here. Let's say one guy had spawned at old and he's over here and last guy is maybe mid or something. So in terms of the IGL role, uh, let's say he's part of this three core who's gonna be trying to break inside here. You know, that might be a call where a person that might be communicating a lot more than his teammates might be the one to make the call and say, you know, let's hit two freezer, one uh, TV. In that case, uh, this person might come over here, this guy might shift over to freezer and they'll try and break two, one, uh, from this way and the guy off old might uh, just help him out in terms of uh, like filling in mid here and playing any spawners that might spawn out and reinforcing the hill or trying to reinforce that way. So that's where the IGL terms might come into play and respawn, you know, in those break moments or let's say we're the ones holding in this situation and it's P3 again and let's say we have two people in hill we have one person in the back here, and unfortunately one person spawned out old. So this is a situation where, let's say this is the main communicator for the team right over here. He might be calling uh, to stack hill or to help out the guys that are in hill in some fashion on how to play it or play it tight. But in terms of an IGL, you need to make sure that you're acting upon the information that you have. And sometimes that's just not possible. Like let's say the quote unquote IGL for the team is the guy who spawned out. You know, he can't make a play for the rest of these guys on Hill because he doesn't know where the pressure is coming from. He doesn't have inf any information on where the break is or how the other team is playing it. You know, he just spawned out old. He has completely no surrounding of what's going on around the Hill. Let's say if we're talking about his mini map, let's say it's like this and all he sees is, you know, three team dots in, in the corner there. there. There's nothing he can act off of. And that's what I wanna really drive home for anyone that might be talking about, you know, the IGL role in, in Respawn. It just has to fall on whoever has the information at the time to make that play and make that decision for the rest of the team. Because let's say this guy is the IGL for the team. He can't make a decision for that. You know, there, it's just impossible. You can't rely on one person all the time to be making decisions for your team and respawn. You know, in this case, a really good position for the main communicator or IGL would be this guy at the back door here. You know, he can get a lot of information on what the enemy team is trying to do. You know, if he can see anyone mid map here, or if he can jiggle and, and see bed and see if they're working around any part of this side of the map, he can communicate with his team and a really good calm in this situation would be is, you know, just watch your front, you know, just watch TV, just watch freezer. I got everything in the back cover. You don't have to worry about that. You know, that is a really good IGL comm. And, you know, you could even say, you know, where they're spawning or, or something like that. But in terms of one person doing it, you just can't have one person. It needs to fall onto the responsibilities of everyone else on the team. You know, let's talk about another situation. Let's say on Mercado, we have P2 and let's say there's 30 seconds left on P2. And this is actually, I'm gonna use the specific play that we talked about uh, on the Mercado comeback versus London with Kyler, where he spawns out over here with 30 seconds left. So let's say we have 30 seconds left on the timer. The rest of our guys are trying to break onto this hill. It is currently being held by the other team. And he spawns out, let's say 25, 30 seconds. In terms of an IGL, if this person 
let's say, trying to break was the quote-unquote IGL for the team, he doesn't know in the moment that, that Kyler spawned out like this. He has to worry about breaking the hill himself. He can't be the one to tell Kyler to start rotating. You know, a really good communicator might be able to do that, but you can't expect it all the time for an IGL. You know, that's a, a problem that we had specifically uh, with Ant going into the first two majors. And if he's trying to tell people what to do off spawn while well, he's trying to get in the mix and break the hill, you know, that just hampers his game so much more. And he can't really focus on his game as much and try and make the impact that he can for our team. So let's talk about this situation. Kyler makes the play to rotate. You know, in order to play at the pro level, he can't rely on someone else telling him to make this play in the moment. He's gonna have so many reps day to day in practice every day you're playing this map so many times throughout the entire season. He just has to recognize on his own and be that IGL for himself. He has to recognize, I have to make this call to start rotating myself and rely on the rest of my team to try and break this hill and hopefully they win those gunfights on the hill while I'm rotated and possibly win uh, the one-on-one -on -one gunfight on their rotator over here. So making these decisions is on a player basis and not on one specific player for a team. Obviously, as I talked about before, there can be that one main communicator for the team who's directing you know, comms in terms of calling out spawns for the most part or directing where the pressure is coming from on the hold but it can't rely on them every single time. You know, we talk about the Dan Gosies or the Octanes. It's very hard to put the term IGL onto them just because of how many decisions that they're gonna have to rely on their teammates to make throughout a respawn. You know, it's, there's gonna be a lot of times where that's gonna happen, especially when they're off spawn or they're the ones holding scrap while the rest of the team is breaking cross map, which happened a lot of the time during the MW2 season. So an elite communicator is a label that I would put on them just because of how good their comms actually were. And you know, your teammates are making hundreds of decisions on the map as well. So it is definitely reliant on every single person to be doing their job as an elite communicator. And technically it is the most efficient way by having them all being able to be elite communicators like that. You know, that would be the golden squad where you have four elite communicators with the talent where you don't have to rely on one single person to always be making the decision. You know, you even see it sometimes in Counter-Strike. I remember hearing an interview, I believe with Kerrigan, and he was just saying, you know, there are a lot of times where other players are gonna have more info than you, and in order to make a play, they have to make a decision on their own without you being in that play. So, you know, if he's on one site and they have to make a play on the other site, you know, they can't rely on him to make a decision for them like that. And that's what I wanna talk about in search. So specifically in search, you know, you do have that IGL in terms of calling the strat beforehand, but a lot of the times the games come down to the mid round decisions. So let's say we have all four players alive and it's two on one site, two on the other site. You know, a lot of times teams would do a two, two on offense and make a mid round decision based off that. You know, if there is information on this side of the map and your IGL quote unquote is this player right here, you know, you have to rely on these guys making a decision and making a play off that based on the info they're getting over on this side of the map. And sometimes their decision is, you know, wrap the bomb this way. And let's say this guy's the bomb carrier right here. He's gonna wrap the bomb here. You know, that's not an IGL call. That just is a call on the rest of these two guys to make a decision based on these this information that they might be getting. You know, so there are gonna be a lot of decisions like that mid round in these search and destroys. You know, I really only wanted to do respawn in this video, but this is a good situation where you can see where everyone technically has to be that IGL uh, for the team. So in terms of the full IGL label, um, if you wanna call it that, I, I understand it, but just make sure that you know that only a certain percentage of the team's decisions might be reliant on that person making that decision. You know, it's not 100%, it's not 0%, but it is in that middle ground where those team decisions rely on that player uh, because they are the most elite communicator for the team. So I just wanna clear that up for everyone because I do see that misconception a lot online, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Reddit, uh, YouTube comments. It's more so they are the most elite communicator for the team and fall into those situations where they're calling for the team. But just because one person is the IGL doesn't mean that other players aren't making significant decisions uh, across the map in a respawn. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on this breakdown of what IGLing in respawn really is at the pro level. Uh, so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.